bridge. Hey, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton again, and we got Eric to help out. Uh, sometimes it's a little two-man job to do this stuff, and we got to dress this mess. We're going to stitch it, and then we're going to smooth it. That's the main problem right there. So we did a little work off camera. Eric is the polisher, the official uh, shop <laughs> polisher now. <laughs> so he cleaned up the backside. We got all the scum out of the way and everything. So hopefully this will weld up. Um, we've got a big mess, as we uh, mentioned before in here. We've got to address that a little bit. And we're going to try to get this stitched together. And the method we're going to use is we're going to attack it, attach it right here. And then we're going to pull this up like this and pull that down and bring this back together over here. That's the theory. Let's see what the practice uh, comes out as and uh, these I guess got really stretched they're overlapping same as the same deal as over this on this flange and it turns out where that broke is actually where a weld was so the the two sections were welded right there there's a weld in the back which we're going to have to grind all off and we'll probably melt that back together again so we got it all clean we got it clamped up and we're ready to try to put a weld right in here. Now we put copper in behind here. We cut out a piece of copper, we got it clamped in there. And the reason for the copper is, um, we're gonna TIG weld this with the pulse and we'll use uh, 1 16th rod, 1100 rod. And I don't know what this alloy is, but it's pretty soft alloy. It hasn't uh, hardened up at all, it's still really soft. And later on, you'll see everybody said it's all cracked. and There's no cracks. It's in really nice shape. I'm going to put my helmet on and my gloves on and see if I can weld that up right there. We'll see if it takes it. If we didn't put the copper in behind here, the oxygen would be on the weld and you just get a black scum and it would be impossible. And uh, this is pretty easy business for a TIG. If you were doing this with gas, I think it would be a little bit tougher because the, the gas would be so extreme heat that there would be a possibility of it melting away. And in order to do that with gas, gas welding, you would have to be a really good aluminum gas welder. 70 amps. So let's go around the horn one more time. I'll try to go slow. If, if, Mark, can you see that uh, stuff there? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven settings. Plus we're on uh, the advanced AC square wave. We have the pedal we're using and advanced AC pulse. So this is a, a pretty sophisticated machine and has all the bells and whistles. A lot of machines don't have that. I, I highly recommend uh, the Everlast if you're looking for a, a, a moderately priced, very well built with a warranty. Now we use a 50-50 gas mix, 50% argon, 50% helium, and we're using 332nd tungsten. It's the lanthanated, the blue one, and uh, we, we grind it back about a quarter with a real sharp point, and the lanthanated ones, once the ball forms, it stays really small and the heat is nice and concentrated. So let's see if we can weld up this mess over here. All right, so when you TIG weld, then you always want to have some kind of uh, hand rest. Now I'm using, I'm just projecting my fingers out there. And I'm going to get my tungsten right in the position I want. And then I pull my helmet down.
I think that did pretty good. Now to get that weld really strong, you have to weld it on the back side as well. So we flow it right together. But uh, that's what we'll probably do is we'll unclamp this, put it upside down, and we'll weld that back side. That'll give us the ability to move this around without that breaking off or anything. So we have to take the aluminum or the uh, copper piece off the aluminum here and we're going to have to move it around so we'll get back in position and then Mark will capture that action. Alright, so we got this clamped all up. Uh, we, had, we put some copper down here and you see the wells a little open on the back side so we're going to kind of flow that together. Alright, here we go. Looks like we need more amperage. Scotty, we need more amperage! I wasn't able to get the little flange. I can get that later. Let me build that. But that looks pretty good. So now we got a, a good strong joint there. I don't think that'll break. And now we got to bring this together here. We got to force it all together and we got to iron that out a little bit. So Looks like we need to jack this up over here. We're going to get some support for it. So let's get that all set up. We'll get some support here. And uh, Eric will be pushing on that way. And bring this together and maybe I can get that ironed out. I've got enough to get a dolly in there. And get a, a little bit of tack in there. And that will help out greatly. What you doing? I'm straightening this out. <laughs> this is like a space station docking operation. I gotta get my yaw right. Who's got the little hammer?
So we, we tied this end together. Now I'm trying to tie this end together and then we'll work this together here in the center. So we're only about an eighth of an inch away and uh, we're just going to keep massaging this until we get it. That might be as good as we can get it there. You know, call that a day there. And we're gonna put a piece of copper in here and then weld that from there to there. And then we'll iron this out and I think that'll come together a lot closer once we get it ironed out. So we need a piece of copper in there. See this weld here, this is the, the separate piece weld and that cracked too. And that's the the side flange weld that cracked also. So they look awful, but I think they'll all melt together there. That's not a problem. Let's see if that can work. Now that, that'd be absolutely impossible to weld up without that copper. Now with the copper, we keep the oxygen off the weld. We'll be able to blob right in there and fill that all right up. So let's see what we can do. Again, that would be, I think, next to impossible with uh, a gas welding setup to be able to do that without melting it all the way. So now we're going to have to tip this thing over and weld it on the other side, make sure we got a good weld, and then we'll try to stitch up the center here. All right, now we have this side of the weld. You can see it's uh, not uh, fully welded there. It's got it a little bit open, so we're going to blob that all together, and we'll try to get that little little spot right here. We'll weld that closed too, and that should be pretty strong once we get that done. This is cracked here, but it's all together, so it's not a problem. And then we'll try to massage this to get this a little closer here. Here we go. Right. Ow! I'm burning up. <laughs> What'd you drop in you? A big it's... drop of aluminum fell down. Oh my side. god! <laughs> I see it. It's burnt. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. You got a hole? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice job. I, I, that's an aluminum heel. <laughs> Not. Well, that's as good as I can get it right now. I actually touched the, touched the aluminum, so I think I'll have to grind my tungsten. 
I almost burnt up my foot. A blob of molten aluminum hit my back of my foot right here. Nice. That's the hot foot. All right, so we have the uh, flange here and the flange here welded up. They're pretty solid. And that's, that's holding it good now. And now we gotta bring this together. We'll just massage some of that metal over there. So, little hammer and dolly action. We gotta overlap here. This thing is like twisted and I don't think we can do much with that. We're gonna have to just melt it together eventually. Now, the, the con we might have a condition where we have a little bit too much metal in here. If that's the condition, we can just shrink it back. We can make a flexible shape pattern off of that side and check it over here eventually. So that's getting pretty close. It's touching here, but we're away over here a little bit. It's possible this needs to rotate down a little bit, but I'm not so sure. If it has to, we will. Um, so if you, if we weld it right here, we'll get shrinkage and it'll pull it in. So if I start right there, we put some copper behind it, it'll shrink as I weld. So that'll pull it the metal that way. We'll have a little bit of a gap over here, but that's overlapped. I think that overlap right here is this metal needs to go that way, but we're just going to melt it all together. I don't think it's a big deal. Let me give it a little more hammer. My other favorite hammer there. The red one. Alright, so we'll clamp some copper behind there and uh, we should be in good shape. Again, the copper does two things. It, it bridges uh, the, the welded zone and also keeps the oxygen off the weld. So it's just a wonderful little aid in the, in the welding process. This is, uh, I believe, like 21,000 stick copper. It's, it's used in the uh, roofing valleys. Very common copper. Now, whenever you clamp up, you want to make sure you're nice and flush, and that's pretty flush. Here we're overlapped, that's going to melt in. Like I said, I think I'm going to start down here. I don't have any copper coverage there. That might be a little bit of a problem. Another problem is I'd like to tip this up so I can uh, see it a little bit better. Alrighty, here we go. You ready, Mark? Yes, sir. Alright, we're trying to get that right there. I got that going good. Little trouble over there because there's no
copper, I might just go back there later and put some copper behind it. Move this out of the way just a little bit. When there's uh, a piece of steel nearby, it just doesn't like to weld. So we'll stitch this together for another inch right here. You all set? Yep. this clamp down a little bit. If there's any impurities, um, you try to keep it as clean as possible. There's a little scum still here from the paint removing. What happens is uh, they will float to the top. You see little black specks on the top. and. Uh, We'll get, we'll get a little shrinkage, so it'll pull it a little tighter as you go. Now you moderate the uh, pulse, not the pulse, but the amperage with the foot pedal as you're going. If there's enough heat, it'll melt. If there's too much heat, it'll melt too much and kind of sink in. So you got to keep constantly uh, checking your amperage with your foot. And a real important one is keeping your tungsten really nice and close. And you don't want to be at an angle like that. It won't throw the flame really well. And then the real important one is I'm using this as a rest. So I, I've got really good control of my location of my tungsten. Whoa, I did it again. <laughs> Look at that. The other foot. Yeah. Both of them in one night. <laughs> I felt that one. Is that a piece of copper that blew off? <laughs> I don't know. All right, that's looking good. I'm not so sure about my toes. Let's uh, weld that from the back side now. So now we have to flip it over, weld that from the back side. So we'll get all set up again. All right, so you can see that's looking really nice. And I'll stitch this up right here, and I should be able to do that even without the copper. Once you have the blob, it'll go in nice. Now, a lot of people are scared to death of aluminum because they know they might have to weld it. And um, they might have tried gas welding. Gas welding takes a little while to learn. And you have to use the flux and all that stuff. The new welders with the inverters, with the with the pulse and you add the argon and helium it literally becomes a no-brainer to weld this stuff and uh, you can get really proficient fast at it uh, I have that video where I taught Esteban's son who was nine years old I gave him a four minute lesson and he was welding an aluminum butt weld as well as I could do it 
So uh, don't be intimidated by aluminum. Aluminum offers so much for auto body making fenders and bodies out of aluminum. All right, so we got that one stitched up, and we'll see if we can do this without the copper. As long as you start in the, the puddle, you can keep adding to the puddle and it'll go. The copper makes it a lot easier, but it's going to be difficult to get a piece of copper in there. So we'll try to do it without it. One more little spot. I got it. All right, so we can probably do a little bit more over there too. And this is really solid now. We got the crack over there we're gonna have to deal with. Where'd that um, brush go? Here it is. So we only have that little spot left. And let's see if we can hammer that a little bit. All right, we have it all clamped up now. We've got a piece of copper in there. It's not the best copper job, but we'll see if we can sew that up. We need more rod. That's what she said. <laughs> Thank you.
can't see this other side here, and I know I need a little bit on that other side. Let me see if I can get around here. All right, I got that all welded up now, and then we'll tip it over and we'll run it on the other side. And uh, we should be as solid as it was when it was brand new. Actually stronger because uh, the weld's a little fat there. We're gonna have to grind that weld down. All right, now we gotta get, that's where we just blob that all in here. We're gonna flow that all together and right here same situation the rest of it's all good so we go from about here to here and here to here and we got a little split right there we might weld that up there too these are going to get welded up later once we get the the metal piece and get that uh, ironed out a little more looks like I'll be able to save all that I think instead of changing that out Fini! Sweet. Fini. We got all the welding done that we wanted to do, that section, and we also did a little bit of smoothing. I'm hoping we'd do a little bit more uh, smoothing, a little shaping here. But uh, that's solid now. We're going to grind these down. We'll work that weld. We have to get this metal half round in here and get that all aligned the way it's supposed to. We'll find the the holes again and drill the holes just like they were supposed to be so this will be bolted on and Mark had made this one and this needs to be put in here and in order to do that this needs a lot of work we'll get that in that in now we have a solid entity now and you can see with these in place this has to go that way and these have to go that way and that's going to be a little caulking tool operation to kind of reshape this opening a little bit this might have to come down a little bit. We'll find out. It's one uh, baby step at a time. You can't make this stuff happen fast. As you've been watching this video, there's a lot to it. And uh, we're saving this really nice, and uh, I'm happy with the way it came out. The weld is super solid, and it's nice to have it all as one entity. Now we can hammer it and slapper it and wheel it and planish it with the planish and hammer whatever we want to do, and it's going to stay together. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Some pretty good welding, I thought, and uh, some pretty good tips in there. And uh, Eric was a, a heck of an assistant to uh, help me out without having him holding it. It makes it a lot easier when you be able to change the uh, direction of the, of the point where you're welding. So I hope Eric stays on. Uh, he's, he's a tremendous asset to the shop, and, and Mark does a great job on the video. And I just want to thank you all for watching. Keep watching. Tell all your friends. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, give us the comments and the likes, and hit that little notification bell. And remember that metal is clay. It's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Thank you.